The graphics card is the supercharger of your PC, and if there's one thing that's guaranteed to boost your gaming performance, it's jamming a new GPU into your rig. And this coming year is going to mark an inflection point in PC graphics, with new generations of graphics cards coming from every single manufacturer in the game. If you've been waiting to upgrade your GPU, then 2025 is going to be the year to do it. In my personal and professional life, I've stuck more graphics cards into gaming PCs than I can count, because maths is not my strong point. And I've tested pretty much every new GPU of the past two decades too. I'm Dave, and I'm about to show you just how damned easy it is to install a new graphics card. Step 1. Preparation. Sticking a new graphics card into your PC is one of the most straightforward upgrades you can do, and also the one with the biggest impact on your gaming experience. It's basically one big lump of tech getting stuck into another big lump of tech. Easy. But for the purposes of this guide, I'm going to assume that you've already made sure that your power supply is up to the task of feeding your new GPU with juice, and that it has the requisite connectors, because that is definitely something you should be doing before you buy a new graphics card. But hardware is nothing without software, and so there are some things that we need to do before you whip out your old GPU. You ideally want to clear out any of the residual drivers from your current graphics card, and the best way to do that is to use a tool called Display Driver Uninstaller. Dull name, smart app. You can just uninstall the drivers via Windows, but it's not smart enough to wheedle out all the fine filaments of code buried into your OS by a graphics card manufacturer. And if they're left behind, there is a chance they could salt the earth for your incoming card, making it either perform worse or just not work properly at all. Thankfully, Display Driver Uninstaller, DDU for short, will get rid of all that for you. The link's in the description below, and you will want to restart your rig in safe mode to ensure you remove everything. Just select GPU as the device you wish to remove, select your old card's manufacturer, either Nvidia, AMD or Intel, and click the button that says Clean and Shut Down. The app will do its work, and then shut down your PC, making it ready for the next step. Step 2. Out with the old. The first thing you need to do is turn off the power to your PC. Now this might seem like an obvious thing, but making sure your system is very much off is easily forgotten. So either flip that big switch on the back of your PC's power supply, or just turn it off at the wall. Either way, you'll want to press the ON button of your system once more, just to make sure that any residual charge is gone. Now it's time to open up your PC and get access to your graphics card. As a straightforward upgrade, you can do all of this without completely unplugging everything, so long as you know what you're doing, and have space to work. But, seeing as you're here looking for help, I suggest unplugging everything from your PC and putting it on its side, just to make it easier to work in. There will be some retaining screws on the rear of your PC to take those out, and unplug the power cables from your graphics card, so now your weapon's free to remove your old GPU. There might be another retaining clip by the PCI socket it's connected to, which you'll either need to push down or push aside depending on your motherboard, but then you'll be free to pull out your card and dispose of in any way you see fit. Step 3, and in with the new. First thing to do is remove all those annoying little plastic grommets that get stuck into the video ports and on the PCI video connector at the bottom. Sure, it's all there for protection, but it's time to set your card free and stick it in the PC. Firm but gentle is the order of the day here. You don't need a lot of force to set your graphics card in its slot, but you will need to push it down. There might also be some unpleasant scratchy noises as you do, but that's mostly normal. Mostly. When it's seated in place, the bracket should line up with the backplate, and you'll be able to screw it down and fix it in there permanently, or at least until the next time you need to upgrade. Before you shut your PC up, however, don't forget to plug in the power cables. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten and booted up my PC and wondered why there's nothing happening on screen. Once that's done, you can close up the side of your case and plug everything back in and give it a boot. Step 4. A soft landing. Now your new graphics card is safely ensconced in its new home, is fed with power and securely set, you can start playing, once you've installed your drivers that is. The easiest way is to simply Google either AMD or Nvidia drivers, or Intel if you've gone down that route, and then go grab the latest drivers for your card. Get them downloaded and installed, and you will be ready to play your games in glorious new GPU-o vision. But what should you be playing to really show it off? Here are my faves, but if you've got any others, put your answers in the comments. So, five games to show off your GPU. Number one, Cyberpunk 2077. So, after a launch of titanic proportions, i.e. a big fanfare then crashed and sank, Cyberpunk 2077 was held up almost single-handedly by Nvidia, making it the company's graphical showcase. Jensen's gang fitted it out with a host of new features which played nicely with GeForce graphics cards, and showed off their ray-tracing chops to full effect. Now, it's not just a game that really highlights some of the most intensive graphical effects in gaming, but it's also a damn fine shooty bang bang RPG now too. Alan Wake 2. I really hated the original Alan Wake. It was dull, obtuse, and relied on an annoying torch mechanic way too much. Alan Wake 2 keeps the obtuse thing going, but at no point does it ever feel dull. Hell, no game that has an interactive dance number could ever feel dull, right? But it's also a visually stunning game too. The creepy forests around Bright Falls are eerily lit, with shadows dancing and teasing around your peripheral vision, but the hyper-detailed town itself really is something to behold too. And it's quite a resource hog, so if you were struggling before, checking it out on your new GPU might well be a sight for sore eyeballs. 
Elden Ring. Elden Ring got itself on the ray tracing bandwagon late last year, but even so, the wild, weird world you inhabit as one of the tarnished is still an incredibly beautiful one, even without the performance hit you'll get from enabling the tracing of rays. It's also a game that hugely benefits from higher frame rates. In fact, so will you. With higher frame rates comes lower PC latency, and that means less chances of you being spliced into by some humongous sword. We all know how important timing is when it comes to a Souls-like. Boosting your GPU performance could have a tangible impact on how effective you actually are out in the world, with just a weapon and maybe Melina for comfort. Red Dead Redemption 2. Ah, there are still times where I'll boot up Red Dead 2 just to go for a ride in the wilderness. You know, just to escape from it all. Then I'll get distracted and get into a gunfight with some random and end up with the mother of all bounties on my head. That has a tendency to put a stop to any sightseeing, but still the PC version of RDR2 remains one of the best looking open world games around. Those broad sweeping vistas still look stunning and will definitely take all the GPU power you can give it. Black Myth Wukong. I will freely admit that I haven't really got on with Black Myth Wukong. Essentially, I'm not very good at games and could only deal with Elden Ring because it looks so damn good and I could easily run away from the bad guys when they started kicking my tail too hard. But Wukong is one of the best examples of Unreal Engine 5 being used to its fullest. It's utilising the very fancy nanite virtual geometry, lumen ray tracing effects and virtual shadow maps. Those are all techie terms for Damn, they managed to make some seriously detailed dudes and environments. Right, so hopefully you've got your PC back up and running with a shiny new graphics card inside delivering higher frame rates than you've ever seen before. And hopefully I've also given you some inspiration for games to try and make the most of your new purchase too. But really, the thing that will highlight the benefits of your new GPU the most will be diving back into your own game library and picking out a game you know like the back of your hand and just seeing how it fares now on your new card. Seeing silky frame rates on an old game that once brought your PC to its knees that's one of the best feelings in PC gaming. To be honest, you probably need a new monitor now, eh? So follow PC Gamer for more hardware how-tos in future episodes.